We hear about decibels all the time when shopping for, I don't know, a Bluetooth speaker, a wireless antenna, or whatever else. But many people I talk to are shocked to hear that when one thing is rated at twice as many decibels as something else, that does not mean it's twice as strong or twice as loud. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? The bass unit in this case is actually the bell, named in honor of Alexander Graham Bell, who achieved fame and fortune most notably for filing a patent for the work of Antonio Meucci, the true inventor of the telephone. Anyway, that's a whole other discussion. Call me, we'll talk about it sometime. The point is one bell represents a difference in a relative power of 10, with a decibel being one tenth of a bell. So if one value is 10 decibels higher than another, it is an order of magnitude greater, whereas a 20 decibel difference would be two orders of magnitude greater, and so on and so forth. Well, hold on a second, Linus. If it's a unit of relative rather than absolute measure, then how can we possibly say something like, this is a three decibel antenna, or this fan is rated at 21 decibels? You see that A next to the decibel symbol for that fan? That is how. It's all about context. Decibels have been adapted for many different uses so they can be expressed more easily by defining standard reference points or a base value. In the case of an antenna's gain, reputable companies will rate them in dBd or relative to a dipole, while companies who want to show inflated numbers will rate in dBi relative to an imaginary antenna that radiates in all directions. And then in the case of noise, the main focus of this video, we use sound pressure level, a measure in decibels above a base value approximately equal to the threshold of human hearing. Okay, cool, Linus. Uh, now I know what a decibel is, but logarithmic units are a little hard to compare in your head when you're shopping for a cooling fan or air conditioner or something. So I, one buddy told me that I can just kind of go, well, a three decibel gain is an effective doubling of sound. Well, I heard from someone else that it's six decibels, which is right. Haha! <laughs> this is where things get really fun. Three decibels equates, approximately, to a doubling of the power ratio, but when we want an amplitude ratio, let's say to express relative voltage or a field quantity like sound pressure level, we need to square the amplitude, which means that a difference of six decibels will equate to double the voltage or double the sound pressure level if you measure it. But that doesn't mean to your ears. A vacuum cleaner rated at six decibels lower than another will actually sound half as loud as the next leading brand or whatever. Your ears don't hear increases in sound pressure in a linear fashion. In fact, depending on the frequency of the noise, the general rule of thumb is that it takes somewhere between a six to 10 decibel increase in sound pressure to achieve a perceived doubling of loudness. All right, Linus, I get it now. But why do we need a unit of measurement that appears to have been designed to confuse people and make comparisons difficult? Fair question. There is the bit about how human perception of sound, and also light actually, is more closely related to the logarithm of intensity rather than the intensity itself, but the main reason is that it allows the use of much smaller numbers in cases where we need to compare values that can differ by many orders of magnitude. Instead of saying, These speakers go 10 billion times louder than the weak human hearing threshold. We just say it's 100 decibels SPL. But if you're sitting there worried about how you're ever going to remember all of this, fear not. Wikipedia has a handy dandy chart that you can reference next time you see a loudness rating in decibels so that you have some context for interpreting the otherwise, truthfully, pretty confusing numbers. Speaking of confusing, today's episode sponsor is lynda.com, an amazing way to increase your understanding of a variety of topics without unneeded confusion. They offer thousands of courses with more added every week, all taught by industry experts. lynda.com also offers a variety of awesome services to their members, like their playlist center, where they have more than 100 if I could express that on my fingers, I would. Mixtapes, which are carefully tailored to certain learning objectives. So for example, if you want to get your start in app development or website design, you can head over to their playlist center and select from a variety of mixtapes focusing on the many key areas of web and app design, about which you may want to expand your knowledge. Lynda.com membership started only $25 per month, but they're offering a special one week free trial to TechQuickie viewers. Just head over to lynda.com slash TechQuickie to start your trial today. Thanks for watching, guys. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment letting me know if you have any suggestions for future Fast as Possibles, or if you have something to say that's more complicated than this. Thanks again for watching, and as always, 
don't forget to subscribe. And share. Please share. When you share, I get a lot more subscribers. And then my ego is like, Wah! and then I get huge, like this. And I have no neck, like this. Would you die without a neck? <laughs>